So I was interested in this game when I first saw the uh, the name of Paper Tales, right? Well, actually, it wasn't the name. It wasn't the art, although this image is pretty cool. Uh, it wasn't the uh, the company or anything like that, although these are great things. It was this notion that I found out it was a drafting-style game a la Seven Wonders, but there were some differences, some spatial differences. You have quadrants where you can place one, two, three, four workers or four units or four whatever. And so you will take, in a two-player game, for instance, you'll take nine cards, you'll take a card out and you'll kick one to the side but in a regular four person game or five person game you'll just draft you'll pick cards out and you'll go to the next person pick cards out go to the next person until you have a hand of five cards to play i love that notion i love the idea of taking a card out and then handing someone else some cards and then you'll take the card from that person you'll pick out one to use pass it on to the next person and that's basically it Let's take a look though at what makes this one different and why I really uh, wanted to focus on this game versus, you know, just Seven Wonders Babble or something like that, of course, right now. So let's talk anatomy of components. First of all, you get a board. I really like having a board because it uh, allows you to actually visually, visually track points instead of you know getting tokens. Uh, it also tells you during which round which way to draft, so that's nice. It also keeps the same art style. That these are sheets of paper. Everything's made out of paper. It's really cute. Uh, good looking thing here. And this is actually what's on the background behind there. You just can't quite see it with all the track on it. Second is the cards. First of all, let's look at the cards that everyone gets. These are five identical cards. They're building cards. Uh, everyone gets the same set of five cards. Here's just one example. I'll give you the anatomy of what it is. This shows you that it's level one, because on the back there, level two. The victory points for the barracks is up here, so it's one victory point. On the back of the level two is worth three victory points, so it behooves you to upgrade. You can, during phase six, you can either, or phase five, you can either build or you can upgrade. You can only do one of these actions, but you can build straight into a level two if you have the prerequisites there. Down here is the cost of level one. This is the cost of level two. If you were to build level one, I'll just show you on the back as you can see it. Level one allows you to get a plus one uh, attack, basically a plus one strength for each wood in your kingdom. So it's contingent on how much wood you produce in your kingdom. And then over here, level two is a victory point for each unit with three or more strength in your kingdom. These both happen during phase three. It also, level two buildings give you an additional card slot. We'll talk about what that means in just a minute. Over here, are the actual cards themselves that you will be drafting and getting. Notice the art style is very interesting. Let's talk through a few things on these first. First of all, the cost is in the top left, so when you deploy to one of the four spaces, these are the cost. The name of the character, how many there are in the deck. So if you're holding out for another one, just know that there might only be one, it might only be two. This is the strength it gives in battle, and then here is what it does power-wise or just pure resource-wise. See the difference in color there? So for the golem, in phase two, when you flip it over, you can freely upgrade all of your buildings from level one to level two. That's pretty awesome. This is an archer. He can fight from the back. So in phase three, he can fight from the back position so he doesn't have to be one of the two front spots. He can be in the back spot. The monkey is a way to get money. It's pretty interesting. And uh, it says earn one coin for each age token on a monkey when it dies. Now there are ways to put more than one age token. Typically when you get an age token, you die the next round. This one's cool because he comes out already aged. So. Interesting things, he produces wood. Also, during the income phase, he gives you an extra coin. The Mystical Healer is one of those ways you can get, you can additionally have more tokens on someone. So, there are combos in this game, but that's how the cards look. Let's look at how it plays right now. So, this is how the setup looks. Everybody gets out there on the board, money goes there, age tokens go there. Everyone gets an identical set of these town uh, building tokens, building cards. Then, you take this deck of cards and you shuffle up in a two-player game, which is what we're doing right now, obviously, uh, two cards, I'm sorry, nine cards total. Normally it would be five cards, but you do nine cards because what you're gonna do is you're going to kick out a card that way preventing any one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, preventing anyone from knowing exactly what's in the other person's hand. So I will look through these cards. He will obviously take those in a minute. Uh, we didn't take them simultaneously, but cameras. Um, you would look through your cards and you'd say, okay, I want to keep this card. I want to kick that one out. So pass it over here. He'll then take his cards, right? At which point I'll take these, I'll look through them, uh, decide which one I'm going to keep uh, from the set he passed me. He'll take the set I passed him. 
We'll go through, pick one, kick another one out, pass it right back. And over. then we'll pass them back and forth. Um, then you move on to the uh, war phase. Now the phases are listed very simply. The war phase is, I'm sorry, you deploy. You deploy next. So once you have your hand of five cards total, one, two, three, four, five, you can deploy them. Now the interesting thing is you have four areas where you can place them, only in these four areas. So um, let's just say I deploy these people here. Now this would cost me $2 to deploy that one. These are both free. Now interestingly, these, let's switch it out just to show you some things. This one has a two strength plus one for each age token on the militia person, on the militia man. Uh, it doesn't have any age, we'll talk about what that does in a minute, but currently my strength is two because it only counts the strength of the people fighting in the front. That person's strength over there, if it's higher than the two, wins this fight. I also produce crystal and this one has a special power. Just note those, the cost is in the top left so I would have to pay three money the whole time. You start with three money so that's okay. Um, the next one is after wars, you'd get your victory points for that. It's three victory points per winning battle. Your income is gained. It's two base plus any additional income given for these cards over here. None of ours do. You then do construction. So notice that the construction cards, all the building cards take a certain cost. And if you'll notice in the bottom right card over there, you produce a crystal, which allows you to buy some of these different things up here. They take different resources, different resources, costs, and all that sort of thing. So you have to just kind of look at what you produce to see what you can exactly. buy. Exactly, so since I produce crystal, I could just outright buy the temple, or you could do it with $2. Um, that's just level one. You can flip it to level two by spending the requisite amount here. And you can flip it and upgrade as one of your actions. You can only do one of these upgrade actions um, the next round. So that it becomes a better barracks, and it also gives you a fifth place to put character so you can actually put a fifth person out here um, or you could build a new building if you build a new building it's the base cost of the building plus two dollars per building you have as a land cost that's kind of just a fee for building uh, but that's it that's those phases then you age everyone gets an age token which was one of those over there if you already have an age token on your character your character dies which means that these characters would just go away once they get an age token on them and then you start over, rinse and repeat. So next time you're gonna draft the other way, it doesn't matter in a two-player game which way you draft, but obviously. But uh, in a four-player, five-player game, you would draft the uh, opposite direction. You do this four times, you're done with the game. So the question then becomes, what did you think of Paper Tales? Now Paper Tales is a different kind of game. I really liked it. I liked the idea of meshing together, the idea of drafting, and then getting a hand, and then playing the hand that you have, and then paying for the hand that you have and then putting them out on those four spaces. I think that's a really cool idea to place them on four spaces and only the ones in the front could fight unless you have an archer who could shoot from the back. I really like those touches and I think they add just enough thematic flair to this game to make this a contender with the Seven Wonders when you're talking about those types of games. It might even surpass it uh, depending on what all continues to come out for. Right now you know there's only a certain amount of cards but that's the thing. Uh, unlike Seven Wonders because you draft your entire hand before you start playing, this is a game that can be learned and you can start learning combos and you can learn better and better combos and then you can start using those combos and your knowledge of the combos to destroy everyone else. Uh, I have a feeling like there were a few times where I thought, man, if I just had one more card, if I knew if there was a card that existed that I could combo with this, you know, maybe an age token or something like that. I, I like the idea that you're playing over 200 years so your characters age and die. It's a little morbid, but then it's a little bit circle of life, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but uh, but fun game really I really like it you know it says 30 minutes I think you know there's no way you can get this down way faster than 30 minutes if you if you all know what you're doing um, and it's only four rounds you know left clockwise counterclockwise clockwise counterclockwise uh, you're drawing five cards you're drafting five cards you're playing those five cards you're building it's really quick especially if you get in a groove of this with people who know how to play so it's actually one time that I've seen where the um, the number on the box of 30 minutes is actually at the top end of the game. It, it really can go very quick, and I like the idea that it's two to five, too. Also, the art's cool. It does look like paper cutouts, which paper tails, I guess, right? Uh, but it looks like almost like someone made it out of construction paper, uh, but detailed, really detailed construction paper, the way it's folded and layered. Uh, that's what the art looks like, and so that's a neat game uh, aspect for me. So great job for art there. That is from Christine Alcuff. Al I'm not probably butchering that last name, but that is... Paper Tales right there. That's what I think of it. I think it's a fantastic game. I think you should check out Paper Tales. Uh, you probably will be at Gen Con. I'm sure I will not be at Gen Con. We'll be out and about performing. That's why the room looks a little bit like a mess. I can't show you any of it right now because we're packing and getting ready for, to do a big uh, long trip. I'm going to be hanging upside down from a straight jacket. I've never done this before. I've never even done that type of illusion before. Usually we do mentalism, but hanging upside down from a straight jacket sounds like a total 
fun, terrifying thing at the same time. So uh, I'll let you know how it goes. And if I make no more videos after this, you'll know how it went. But uh, anyway, I'm Brian Drake with The Latest Retro here on The Dice Tower. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at The Latest Retro. And those of you who follow me on Patreon, uh, I know it's a little bit sh um, scattered about how we get this Patreon stuff out there, but if you want to support what we do, the videos we make here to increase the quality, to increase the uh, frequency, all that sort of stuff, make sure to check out our Patreon right here, and you too could become a patron, as it were. Anyway, until next time, I'll see you. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.